Hey guys, I'm Ryan and this is the new Sony Xperia 1 4 and besides trying to make a good flagship phone Sony has another goal in mind and that is to set a new trend in green packaging because there is literally nothing in the box but the phone. No charging brick, no tools and take this, not even charging cable. Now I'm not against it as it kind of makes sense as most of us have at least one USB-C cable lying around somewhere. But let me tell you about exactly how I feel when I hold a phone like this from Sony. First of all, this is such a lightweight phone. I don't think I've held a flagship phone this lightweight for quite some time now. Uh, if you think of the two most prominent phone manufacturers in the world on two ends of a spectrum, I think this phone and probably other flagship phones from Sony sit right in the middle. When I hold an iPhone in my hands, I think of a premium product. When I hold a flagship Samsung phone, I think best value for money and a feature rich phone. But when I hold a phone like this, it feels like I'm getting all those things combined. I mean, it's premium. It looks beautiful, especially this exclusive ice white color is just amazing. Uh, and it's got all the goodies that come with an Android phone. I have to say right off the bat that the narrower shape of this phone is brilliant. It just makes it so much easier to hold. And with this phone, you get to have the two features that certainly no iPhones have and no Samsung flagships come with. And those are the headphone jack and the memory card slot. I mean, it feels like Sony is just saying to all these brands, relax guys, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. We don't need to remove the memory card slot or the headphone jack. On the other hand, they also don't seem to have bothered with the front facing camera's location for a few years now. And while we already expect to see under display uh, cameras on pretty much all major flagship phones pretty soon, Sony has been placing the front facing camera right above the display, which is definitely outdated. Uh, you could say the same thing about the fingerprint sensor on the side but you know what it works really well and speaking of the cameras one of the biggest selling points of this phone is its true optical zoom lens which as far as i know is unheard of on a phone and sony has decided to stick with 12 megapixel on all four cameras so three on the back and uh one on the front i personally wish the resolution of the cameras were higher than 12 megapixels I mean, back in the day, it was all about the megapixels for me, but then I realized that uh, that's not all there is to a good camera. But now I think in 2022, at least one of the cameras could have come with a much higher resolution. When I turned on the phone, I kind of had this feeling that it's a little too laggy, but then I remembered that I've had this experience in the past uh, with other phones the first time I turned them on. And it did get better, but uh, it still felt laggy. And to my surprise, when I checked the display settings, the 120 Hertz refresh rate was not enabled by default. You have to do it yourself. And when I did it, it made a day and night difference. Now, in terms of the UI, I have some mixed feelings about it. On one hand, everything seems simple and familiar to me as I've had Sony phones before. And on the other hand, when I compare it to iOS or One UI, then I think there's a lot of improvements that need to be done. For example, there should be better animations and look and feel than what we get now. One of the issues I've had with Sony phones in the past was overheating, especially during video recording. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see a warning about a warning related to overheating the moment I opened the camera app. So it was just preparing me, you might get this warning. But fortunately, with the light test that I've been doing, nothing has crashed so far. Yeah, like I said, the camera is the main selling point of this phone. Uh, it's not a hard sell, but I think there's always some improvements that could be done. For example, the, uh, the resolution of the cameras. So despite the fact that there are now larger lenses inside, I still think uh, something perhaps a little bit higher than 12 megapixels would have been beneficial. And as far as gaming, I did try a couple of games, one of them being Call of Duty, and I got solid 60 FPS playing both games. And for the record, I played both games at max graphic settings. Uh, but Sony has this game launcher, which is very cool, that allows you to tweak the performance of games even more. For example, uh, you can prioritize high performance for certain games and even try to push the frame rates higher. Uh, not only that, with this phone, uh, there is a built-in support for streaming games. You can stream your games smoothly, just like you would uh, on your PC. But of course, playing games and streaming them would significantly affect the battery life. And speaking of battery life, Actually, this phone has a 5000 mAh battery, but to be sure, I checked the actual max capacity of the battery and to my surprise, it was actually 5000. But I also wanted to check the current battery health, uh, which was sitting at 4825 mAh, so basically 97% of the max capacity. And in case you didn't know, the battery capacity that the manufacturers advertise could be 
very different from what you actually get on your phone. So it's really great to see that the 5000 mAh is a real value and about the battery health it's just an estimate but very likely to be close to a real value. So I'm not too disappointed to see a 97% battery health on a new phone when I compare it uh, with the S22 Ultra and if you remember that one had a different uh, maximum uh, battery capacity than what Samsung had advertised and I think the battery health was around 91%. 91% battery health for a new phone, so I think I'll take the 97% of the Xperia. And Sony also claims that the battery on this thing will last longer and healthier after 3 years, uh, much better than other phones thanks to the Xperia adaptive charging. But I have my doubts as you know, iPhones have excellent adaptive charging and Samsung phones also uh, change the charging behavior based on uh, your usage pattern. But if you really want to use this phone as your main camera for your videos or vloggings, or playing and streaming games at the same time while plugged in. Uh, there's this really cool feature where you're basically powering the phone directly as opposed to charging the battery and then battery powering the system, which causes significant heating problems and will damage the battery life for sure. So I'll definitely give a point to Sony for this amazing feature. The Xperia 1 4 is water resistant and you're gonna be fine if it gets wet, perhaps with a splash of water or even more. So you're not really supposed to directly expose it underwater, but I did to find out what happened. So I went for a swim with a, a few friends and completely exposed it underwater. Basically I swam underwater with the phone in my hand and nothing happened and the phone is perfectly fine. I did try to use the phone underwater just for good measure, uh, but the display wouldn't respond to my touch, which is expected. There's of course the Music Pro that you could use to record your voice, record your vocals, and even in a noisy environment, um, it's supposed to sort of suppress uh, all that noise, or a lot of it at least, so you could hear a very clear voice. But I guess now you could be the judge uh, how clear my voice is. I, it's not very noisy here, I can just hear some construction noise. Other than that, it's not very um, windy. So I think we could say that this is really a phone on a camera, not the other way around, because there's just so much you could do. There's the Photo Pro, Cinema Pro, Video Pro, and of course Music Pro, uh, which really put many things a creator uh, needs uh, or could have in one place. One of the things I really liked when I started filming was the video stabilization. I think it does a fantastic job smoothing out all the small shakes and wobbles, even in 4K better than many other phones. One thing about the 12 megapixel resolution though, you need to bear in mind that the 12 megapixel is only available with the four by three aspect ratio. So if you change it to different aspect ratios, then you're gonna get even lower megapixels. This is nothing new and you'll see it across different brands. But what I really like about Sony is that it tells you exactly what you get as opposed to hiding it uh, from you or not showing it at all, which is more common amongst other brands. Ultimately, I think there are just so many great camera features and tricks that this phone has that probably the majority of people who buy this phone are missing out. So if you can try to play out with some of the camera features to get the most out of this phone. Uh, and also I think in general, creative people and content creators can benefit from this phone the most. Any thoughts or questions for me, comment below. I appreciate you watching this. See you in the next video.